Hi and welcome to Sure Sir's classes. Today we are going to deal with a chapter that is feared by most students that is mathematical economics. Let's begin. We are going to start off with a sum on Cartesian products. We have three cases A, B and C. Let's see how to do that. We are given a set S1 of 3, 6 and 9. S2, A, B and S3 with M and N. Let's do the first one. A. S1 into S2. Any guesses on how to do that? Well, we are going to have 6 possible sets. That is 3 comma A 3 comma B 6 comma A 6 comma B 9 comma A and 9 comma B Easy enough? Let's do the second one S2 into S3 How to do this? In the same manner We'll take always the first element of the first set and the second element of the second set and we'll write in that order no matter what or how big the sets are given let's do s2 into s3 we'll have four possible cases namely a comma m a comma n b comma m b comma n and lastly, S3 into S1, and this is what we are going to get. Moving on to the next question, here we have, if the domain of the function y equals to 5 plus 3x is the set of x given x belonging between 1 and 9. Let's find the range of the function and express it as a set. The range will be y given 8 less than equals to y less than equals to 32. This you can easily obtain by taking the values of x and putting it in this function. For example, when x is equals to 1, the value of y is y equals to 5 plus 3, which is 8. And this is the lower limit. Similarly, when x equals to 9, we have y equals to 5 plus 3 into 9 which we get as 32 which is the upper limit and this is how we represent a range and we express it as a set next very easy next moving on to the next question the next question being for the function y equals to minus x square it's given if the domain is set to all non-negative real numbers. Can you guess what will its range be? It's very easy. The range is a set of all non-positive numbers. And that is how we find is non-negative real numbers are the will be the entire set that will be there in this range which are all the non-positive numbers still very easy going on to a harder question hmm. tough no 
in the theory of the firm economists consider the total cost c to be a function of output level which were given as c equals to f q according to the definition of an should each of the cost figure be associated with a unique level of output well the answer is already given it will be a no secondly should each level of output determine a unique cost figure yes and now we face the problem of a graph we are given three questions again let's do it first we are given to graph a function of 16 plus 2x we'll draw the axes let's do it with green here we need to draw a graph of y equals to 16 plus 2x in easy terms if we put x equals to 0 the value of y is equals to 16 that is when x is 0 y will be 16 and hence as x increases the value of y also increases thus the graph will be as follows pretty simple let's do the next one now we have to graph for y equals to 8 minus 2x again let's put x equals to 0 we find the value of y equals to 8 now how will this graph be notice that as x increases y decreases hence it will be downward sloping now for the third case notice that it's similar to the first one hence we will have a similar curve except over here the intercept is 12 so we plot 12 and notice again like the first case as x increases y also increases and hence it's an upward sloping curve now we have to graph the function y equals to 36 by x for while some will look at this function and be scared but let's see how to do this we'll change the color the graph will be very simple that is this over here y is inversely proportional to x that is as when x increases y decreases as we can see from here now we have to say what will happen when this case occurs that is when both variables can take negative values as well how must the graph be modified it will be very simple it will be just a mirror image in the third quadrant this is because as negative values occur they will appear in quadrant 3 and a curve which will be the mirror image of the one in quadrant 1 how i'll explain notice when x is negative you can put the function as y equals to 36 by minus x similarly like before as x increases which is negative x increases the fall in y increases further thus when x moves in this manner the value of y decreases which means becomes more positive moving on to a next question in this video I did all the easy sums still many people face difficulty hence I did all the easy sums now since uh, we can put a smile to that face we can do this problems easily in the next video I'll be doing tougher sums
प्लीज लाइक कमेंट एंड सब्सक्राइब प्रेस द नोटिफिकेशन बटन वी कैन कम अप विद मैथमेटिकल इकोनॉमिक्स पार्ट टू